A term that I hear a lot is the term keystone species. So what's a keystone species? A keystone species is just a species which has a disproportionate effect on its environment and on the other species in it. We call it a keystone because it's as if these ecosystems are a stone arch and the keystone is the stone at the top of the arch on which all of the other stones lean, right? So it's a single species that is allowing all of these other species to exist. Classic example of a keystone species is a beaver. Beavers dam waterways and they create these flooded areas and drive all these really important ecosystem processes that create habitat for everything from aquatic organisms like fish, reptiles, amphibians, plants, all of these different things rely on beavers to create the habitat that they need to live. As a side note, while beavers sometimes cause problems for our infrastructure, they also provide a lot of human benefits, improving water quality, improving flood resilience downstream. The beaver ponds tend to store a lot of carbon and also are very important to storing water and recharging aquifers, doing stuff like that. Beyond beavers though, there are also a lot of other species that we might call keystone species. One species that we think of sometimes is the pileated woodpecker, which is Vermont's largest woodpecker and which is considered a keystone species basically for three reasons. So the first reason is that they perform this really important role as they're foraging in these rotting trees for insect and beetle larvae, they're lowering the population of those insects. And those insects actually have a slightly parasitic relationship with a lot of our trees. So where there's some insects, it's not a big deal. Where there's too many insects, they can actually be really harmful. So the pileated woodpeckers are basically an apex predator of those insects, regulating those populations and keeping them at a sustainable level. The second reason is that they create tree cavities, basically holes in trees, which are this really important nesting and denning habitat for this incredible array of different wildlife from rodents like squirrels and chipmunks to wood ducks and owls and fisher and all different kinds of things. And the third reason is that they're really important to nutrient cycling. Basically, in order for our forest to continue to exist, we need for trees to die and for those trees to be recycled into the soil so that those nutrients and other resources can be reabsorbed by trees in the future. In order for that to happen, we need this entire community of organisms that we call the necrosphere to break down those dead trees and help them become incorporated into the soil. What pileated woodpeckers do as they're tearing apart these trees is basically turning big pieces of dead wood into smaller pieces of dead wood, which can then be colonized by bacteria and fungi, microorganisms that can help that wood become then incorporated into the soil and turn into a form that trees can use. Like the role that the pileated woodpeckers are playing with those insect populations, most apex predators are considered keystone species. They perform this incredibly important role keeping populations of their prey species sustainable. And like those insects and trees, a lot of, for instance, our large herbivores like white-tailed deer, when there's a few of them, not a big deal. When there's too many of them can be incredibly problematic and can actually damage habitat for tons of other species. Those apex predators, while they're killing wildlife, are actually protecting habitat for all of those species whose habitat would otherwise be degraded by too many of those prey species on our landscape. One thing that I think about a lot is what would it take for us humans to become keystone species? We do not have a great track record of managing ecosystems, but there's nothing about us that is unable to manage an ecosystem well. It's just that we haven't made good choices in the past. And the most remarkable thing about us is the tools that we have at our disposal. We have this incredible power that we can use, yes, to degrade ecosystems, but also maybe to help them heal. And I really believe that by using these tools in a different way, by using our power to protect biodiversity, we can ourselves become a keystone species.